All right, good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, May 18th, 2022. My name is Suzanne Conrad, and I'm the founder of Light Your Leadership. And I am in a wonderful bedroom of my husband's cousin. And in a way, this very setting uh, shows us something about the future of work and mobility. So as a recap, this is the third in a session of, of three on the future of work. The first one was really about the future of, the, of, of work is the future. So it's about creating a vision, being able to share with uh, your team, with your employer, uh, or you know, if you're the entrepreneur, what your vision is, and, and really being able to have those resources available. So in Lightyear, we are, instead of LinkedIn, which reminds people of their qualifications and links be people based on interests, and that's a wonderful thing. What the Lightyear platform does is it supports people in who they're becoming. It gives them a place to create a profile with their vision, with their goals. And it's done in a private setting where there's no ads. And the people that are members of this community um, have the choice to support each other to help with their goals and who they're becoming. So the first session was really about creating a vision and coming from the future. Then the second session was really about um, that the, the future of work is human and that uh, it's really about owning your own unique gifts and remaining an artist. So we talked about the power of creativity and setting goals for yourself that uh, allow you to have a greater understanding of the things that you love to do, even if they're not directly in your career and what we think of as work, because we are what we, um, the word that uh, has been coined are multi-potentialites. <laughs> so that's, that's somebody that has many gifts and they bring them together and they integrate them. There was a time much earlier in my life, in my 30s, where I was much more segmented, like there's this Suzanne that does this thing, and this Suzanne that's a mother, and this Suzanne that shows up in the community, whereas the idea of uh, the future of work being human and being a multi-potentialite is this idea that we can integrate all of our our gifts so that the creative pursuits that we might consider even like a hobby actually contribute to the ways that we earn a living. So that's what that second session is about. And all of us uh, set a, um, a goal or had the choice to set a goal and to share that. So if you haven't seen those, you could listen to them. And today, today has a super curious title, I thought. This is something that we heard people needed to talk about. And, and the title that the team came up with is, uh, you know, who am I to want that? Who am I to want that? So there's a couple of pieces in that. Who am I to want that? So, you know, oh, and just if you've never been to Light Hours, I talk for a while. <laughs> and this is what we call a preamble. And then we'll all talk together. Um, so if you're just tuning in, I was sharing before we started the recording that on I, I, I led a live event for about 70 people on Monday and again, uh, a similar amount of people last night. And it, it was on these kinds of topics. And one of the things I, I really have noticed is that, oh, wow, it's so, it, it was so moving last night. There was a, a young woman, well, she probably wouldn't say she's young. She's young for me, single mom. And, and we did a get there now process, which is a way to help a person take a leap of faith. And um, in that, we also help people close a door, like the, the place where their energy might be leaking out. And for her, she was, she was really closing the door of this kind of fear and doubt that she could take this leap. And, and it was essentially, um, she was closing the door on feeling trapped. So as I go about my work, you know, and, and listening to people around the country, especially here in the West, this idea of who am I to want that comes up because it's important for us to be able 
to know that we can want a different kind of life, that we can want a different kind of career, that we, here's the big message for this morning, that we can impact the future of work. We aren't just passively like, here's the future of work and suck it up. You know, it isn't, it isn't just simply that you have to be at the effect of those circumstances. We can craft and create. Additionally, if you listen uh, to one of our recordings, you'll, you'll see that there was an individual that realized she was in a bit of a catch-22 where she had a vision for her life and she realized it was time for her to ask her employer if she could work remotely so that she could move to another city with, with her husband. And it was about, you know, who am I to be able to ask for that? So this morning is about cultivating and developing the confidence, the confidere, the with faith, to begin to participate in the human future of work that you are. So it's my goal. Well, just welcome. Look, there's Sarah Lemansky, all these people. Hi, you all. I, I like this morning time. I'm meeting other people. Anyway, um, so I want to give you some tools to be able to do that. And I'd love to um, interact with a few people so that I know how I could support you. So let me listen here. The tool that I'd love to begin with, so I know some of you might be driving um, and not necessarily right at your desk or, or uh, with a pen and paper or a phone accessible, but let me just describe one of the most fundamental tools that we use in Lightyear, and we call it the power of knowing what you want. It's a circle, and what we do in the power of knowing what you want is we, it, whether, whatever the topic is, whether it's our 10 year future, whether it's the outcome of the meeting, what, that's my husband, Brett, he's getting something. He's very nice. He flew me here. He's a pilot. Whether it's um, a, a, a marriage, whether it's anything, what we do is take a moment to write what you want in the center of the circle and what you don't want on the outside. So for instance, um, I was using this to prop up my computer just a bit, but I did one not too long ago about a situation that I'm working on. So I just want to, I want to give you some transparency in, into how I've been working. And it's essentially a circle. And then it's got all this information of what it is that I want in the center of it. And the thing that's great about a circle is it's one of the, there it is. Okay, so there's my handwriting, right? So this took me maybe about four minutes to do. I did it quickly. One of the great things is if you can write faster than your lower personality stops you, <laughs> you might say, what is she talking about? Sometimes what I do is I speed write so that I can get ideas out of my mind before I start to second guess or edify. So what I'd love you to do right now, if you're able, is to, I'll, I'll give you about four to five minutes to write, like, what is the future of work that you want? And what if you are the person, see, listen to me, trust me, what if you are the person along with me to be co-authoring the future of work? Now, I'm going to keep love preaching at you, and then I'll tell you when to begin. Um, there's a place where let me just tell you another story. 15 years ago, I would go to different cities and I would raise money for the light year work that we do in Africa. And I, I remember, you know, and a lot of times with younger people. So I was, you know, I don't, let's say in my early fifties, maybe late forties. And I, I would always begin by asking people, what do you want to live to see? What do you want to live to see? And so let's see if we can deliver on that. And, you know, then I'd write the things up on a whiteboard in the front of the room. And inevitably, in a group of 20-year-olds or, or even younger people, you know what one of the things they would tell me that they wanted to live to see, along with the cooling of the planet and things that were about really the restoration of well-being of the earth, oftentimes they would say, Suzanne, I want to live to see the transformation of money. And I remember 
needing to use my very own tools so that I could listen to them and not say, well, that's not going to happen in your lifetime. I thought, well, that wouldn't make me a very good mentor and teacher if I, I just told them that. But they would, I was like, wow, this is so interesting. And, and now fast forward, it's 2022. And I myself am involved and learning about alternative methods of exchanging energy, time, talent, treasure, cryptocurrency. It's not just an idea, it's happening. The future of work is happening. And, and back then I used to say to myself, well, you know, who am I, who am I to, uh, to think that that's possible? And I realized, you know, Suzanne, you put yourself in the front of this room to be able to listen to these young people and empower the things that they see, even if they don't make sense to you yet. So why I'm telling you that story is it's very likely that many of you will write things in the center of your circle of the power of knowing what you want that even you're surprised at like, oh, I do want that. And who I am to want that is the person that's bringing in new ideas, that's inspiring myself. So I mean, I just got goosebumps on my thighs. So for instance, I want to just give you a picture of what it could look and feel like. It, it really, oh, and I just did a podcast with my friend Dane, who's the CEO of Huddle 3 Group, that, that the future of work is about agency. It's about self-leadership. It's about choice. It's about freedom. It's about mobility. It's about beauty. It's about inclusion. And what's outside the circle could be things like regret, grudges, pain, uh, you know, um, looping mental illness. Like, oh, I met a woman last night and I asked her, cause I was signing books and things. And I asked her, what, what's something that you want? Cause I, I like to, when I sign the book, say, may you have this? And she, she said, well, you know, Suzanne, younger than me, but, you know, mature in her career. She said, I, I've been in, in the human resources business my whole life, and I want to live to see workplaces become centers of healing and well-being. I was, I, my jaw just dropped. I thought, hallelujah to you. I'd never heard anyone language it quite like that. It was so moving to me. So are you guys getting a sense of who you are about what you could write in your circle? So before we begin, I'd love to hear from two or three people who are hearing something new about who they could be to want what they really want. So, so just, just go ahead and feel comfortable to, to unmute or to raise your digital hand. Carla, hi Carla, tell us what you're sensing and hearing. Well, I, um, I mean, I've been a new yoga teacher for about a year and a half and I had some healing for myself and some chakra openings and I started learning about crystals and I, I work with um, really sick people as a respiratory therapist at the hospital and I noticed that when people need human connection to heal and hmm. I have used my crystals on people that I'm learning and I must have rubbed my crystals on like 20 people at work now. And last week I had a nurse who had a cancer patient. She had her stomach removed and um, she has some like scars from radiation on her body. And the nurse asked me if I'd stop by her because the lady wants to learn about crystals. And I said, well, okay, I'll do that, but I'm no professional. I'm learning. I just do it feels good for me. And so I visited her and then I, I rubbed, I had a selenite crystal and I was rubbing it on her where she had IVs and um, her fingernails had toxins from the chemotherapy. And I, I used my crystal and I, I pretended like I was painting like fingernail polish on her fingernails. And she was, she was like, oh my God, that feels so good. I said, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm glad it feels good for you. <laughs> so I, she said, you know what? You're a healer, Carla. 
and I, I think I might need to investigate that a little more because people are, are around me are, are feeling that I change that way and that I can help that way. And I'm not sure where to go from there, but I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. And for everyone joining us that's meeting the Light Your Community, may I say Carla is a respiratory therapist. She's, you know, she's a family member. She brings her indigenous background. She's a, a Light Your Leadership coach. She's a yoga instructor. She's a multi-potentialite. And she's smack dab in the middle of discovering new abilities. And yeah. I know for me, uh, actually, you know, the book I wrote really, it, 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 people think, oh, it's a memoir. It's not. It's about coming out of the spiritual closet and what that took for me. And there's something, see, I, I want everyone listening to hear how Carla did this. See, she's expressing what has her feel good. She's not making claims and people request you by their choice. So she's not imposing, this is what one must do. I believe the future of work has to do with the exchange of these gifts and, and making choices. Cause there was probably a day in your respiratory therapy training, where if you would have said, hey, I, I'm, I'm going to like rub selenite on um, people's fingernails, they'd say, no, you're not. <laughs> and now you are. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. it, it's, and it's moved because Carla's expanding. You see, she's altered. Oh my gosh. I mean, you've altered what's possible for those those guests, those, those patients, those people, because you are sharing your evolution. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Keep it up, you know, and, and see for anyone, see how Carla's putting all the pieces together. And I hadn't even known that really till I really deeply listened there is that, you know, the future of work is the future. The future of work is human. The future of work is knowing that you are the one to know and to give it. So thank you. Yeah, hearts for Carla. Let's hear from a, another person before we do our, our power of knowing what you want. And another person that's sensing and, and seeing some things new for themselves. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Carla. Hey, Suze. Hey, hi. Hi, hi Randy. Hi. Hello. I, so, I hear it's your birthday. It is my birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Brandy. Uh, oh, Allison, stay right there. I want to talk to you too. Yes, tell us what you're seeing, Brandy. So I'm feeling all sweet and tender about it right now. So just a second. Um, <laughs> share, and Carla share, I love how, um, how her nurse friend made the link and called her forward. Yes. And, um, and I, I see that in my life. I see it in how I've experienced you and like your leadership calling me forward. And, um, and so that's what I'm present to right now is how we can call each other forward and and see what there is to see and and point to it and you know and like that you're absolutely correct and like knowing what a person is learning and what their low a growing edge is and inviting them to contribute from that growing edge is such a gift and if we can be that for each other let, let we can all be that that nurse friend you know yeah. um mm -hmm. I just want to give a shout out to, to my brother-in-law. I mean, you know, if you, if you know me, you'll know this. And, and, and if you don't know me, you can know this now, you know, he, he's the founder of Lululemon Athletica, you know, so a family member and he, he, now that he's older, 
he says thank you to me. But in the early days, the way that he said thank you to me wasn't saying thank you. He did exactly what Brandy is saying. He said, oh, I see Suzanne is learning this. She's, she's, she's got this glowing thing in her heart. He wouldn't say it that way. But he'd, see, he'd see, she has these growing abilities and he would thank me by giving me opportunities to be who I am and let me learn that with people. And that's really why we have light year in a large measure. And, and also because of my children, children always give you an opportunity to, to, to grow. But thank you, Brandy, for really just, it's, it's the bridge. It's, it's, it's helping us be in that becoming. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> that might be in the power of knowing what you want for some of you. Like, I, I want to be that bridge for others. I want to connect talent with other people. I want to be that. Yeah. So, so, Allison, are you still there? Could you come on? Sure. Um, Hi. Hey. So I think I'm seeing something that kind of relates in terms of being a bridge or like a, just being really clear with language in work conversations, like in my professional day job. Um, I was in a conversation yesterday and I'm trying to like process the conversation as it relates to this conversation and that um, I work in, so you know, I work in clean energy, but for those, you know, so it's a conversation about workforce development and training for the future of the clean energy industry and what kind of trainings needed to provide people with good jobs. And one of the um, people on the call, uh, we were talking about the value of diversity and bringing women and people who are, you know, underrepresented in the industry into the, into the mix, into the training, how we get folks, um, you know, into trainings and communicate with people the value of these jobs. And um, this uh, person said, well, now that the Kumbaya is done, like, let's get on to like talk about money, you know? So it was really interesting. Like now that we've, you know, talked about, you know, kind of in a negative way, like now that we've gotten that Kumbaya good stuff, you know, about bringing people in and caring for people, it's a really interesting conversation, but it was kind of like a but in the conversation. Uh -huh. like, but, you know, let's talk about money rather than like an and. And we know that doing that will, you know, bring value to our company, to the work. And so I think I'm just getting clear for myself, the value and the, of light year and being really clear with our language and being able to be in that conversation and somehow shift it in the moment. Like that's not a, but it's an, and, and I, I think there was a missed opportunity in, in connecting this kumbaya or whatever the person was in, viewing as unnecessary or just feel good and making the connection. So I'm just seeing something there that, um, you know, as a value to just be really clear with language and also speaking up when I see an anti-vision or see something that's stopping a conversation that really. Yeah, let's stay with what Allison is showing us. This is so perfectly specific and powerful. Um, and I'm grateful to have lived as long as I have and seen the different phases because uh, organizations are on a spectrum of being all the way to knowing that having those conversations can become integrated and it is the source of economic value to somewhere in the middle, the one that you experienced yesterday, Allison, where the person has, well, okay, well, we're supposed to talk about this and it does feel good and yet it isn't the real conversation because the way I've been trained in the past is we got to talk about this. And, and um, for so long, Oh my God, I just love you. So like in the center of the circle would be speaking up, integrating the conversation in the moment, having clear communication. So may I offer some potential coaching that even you could activate today if you wanted to, or you could consider. So it's been my sense that when I'm in a situation like that, that the person saying, well, there's a, there's the person that always says, could I pick your brain? And I say, oh, please don't pick my brain. That's like such a crazy image. Please allow me to contribute to you freely and generously. And, and then they realize that. Then my other pet peeve um, is, uh, oh, oh, they drank the Kool-Aid. And I'm like, no, no, no. Uh, that was actually uh, um, a massacre of people and a manipulation. Please don't call this incredible culture Kool-Aid. And I teach people about that. Now, when they use the kumbaya, here's what my experience has been, and it may not be true for that person. 
It's that they actually want that and don't believe they can have it. It's that who they are is who am I to want, who am I to be able to integrate all of the good feeling with the economic engine? I haven't, I don't have the pictures for that. I've only been told in a diversity training, we're supposed to talk about that. And it's often, Allison, that the person has had a wound in the past where someone told them they were that. If I had to count how many times people say, oh, she's so, oh, she's so uh, la la or um, kumbaya. And then they realize, oh my God, she's worked in a nuclear weapons facility. Oh my God, she's built a multi-billion dollar company. Oh my God. Then they kind of go, oh, hmm. So, I don't lead with that though, because then that's another weapon. So let's go there. Let's go there for fun. Um, and even if this person watches the recording, which they could, I want to extend my loving compassion to them because they want the and life. So what, what is a draft of what uh, you could say in that moment that could have allowed that person to potentially link the diversity with the economic engine? I, I think I, I, I think I, I agree. I mean, I think they is something that they see as valuable and something that, you know, so maybe it's even that, you know, like, um, you know, I know you value this like diversity, the, the mm, like the this focus on bringing diver, you know, diversity in, and like I know you value it, and I think this, you know, the there's value beyond, you know, there's like the maybe a comment, like you know, even something about value, like the value of um, of it financially, of it like fiscally, of it, you know, there's there's value in us, you know. Um, Like I think acknowledging the value because I think they see the value and I just don't know if they have a way of um, like quantifying it and so you know just maybe yes. even speaking to the value beyond what we can currently quantify. Um, yes. You know, in in the fact that like this will have value for you know because like basically somebody who needs to hire like they're like, like they it's a solar company and they want to hire people and so you know there's there's the the value in bringing in um what you need you know beyond the the cost of it potentially this is so great what you're saying and then what uh what joelle put in the chat she says kumbaya was originally an appeal to God to come and help those in need. So, so I'm going to use that, Joelle, because because then when somebody says to me, Suzanne, that's a kumbaya, then I. So one of the things we do in Light Year is we're one of the only self leadership programs that helps people. We have a principle that helps people actually look at what their particular belief around creation is because it's it's such a deep belief as a leader that if we don't distinguish that and upgrade it, it it often fails leaders at the moment when they need it the most so for instance it could be now used to refer to one who does not examine the issues or it's uh revelat revelatory of cock-eyed optimism so what what could be great in the conversation is like what I do with the Jim Jones and the, and the Kool-Aid and actually say, yeah, it is Kumbaya in that. Let's, let's bring in now, now watch you guys. Here's what you could want to do. If you want to stay corporate and you want to bring in the source energy, bring in the values. So, so Allison, um, now I'm not quizzing you, but you'll know at, at least a couple of them. What are the values of the organization that you work for? Um, so the organization I work for, I feel like, um, oh, it's not that, um, like being a great source of, of information. So like, um, uh, mm. being a, being a source of, of, um, 
uh, um, I don't know if it's a value, but I think it's a value. I mean, it's a being a being a source of like neutral information, or being a source of um, a like knowledge. trusted. So I guess trustworthiness, like being trusted, being um, uh, yeah, like being trusted, being uh, so being a trustworthy yeah. source of information mm -hmm. is a value. So so watch. This is what I do in these meetings. So I, I so. I invoke the spirit of the value. So I could say, okay, so kumbaya means actually to, you know, to, to appeal to God to come and help those in need. Well, so we could use it in our language that we have. So a value that we have is to be a trusted source of knowledge in this arena. So let's call on the energy that provides that for us to show us how to link the conversation that we just had to the one that we're about to have. And people go, oh, okay, I'll do that. I, I want you, I want you to just have a real practical way to do it. Mm -hmm. I, what great examples we've had here with Carla, Brandy, and Allison. Thank you so much. Okay, wow, I, I just got an upgrade. So now what we're gonna do, everyone, is go ahead and draw your circle. And let's take about five minutes and go ahead and begin to write what you want for the future of work, for your work. You know, it could be to be able to express yourself. Now, I'll, I'll be talking the whole five minutes. <laughs> so go ahead and start writing. Um, so it could be that uh, like the woman last night, I, I want to be creative and be paid well. Uh, it, it could be that you, you want to, um, be encouraged to learn, that you, you want to be able to encourage others to learn. It could be that what you want is a new relationship with the machines you work with. We talked about that on Members Light Hours this Monday. And some of the things you don't want could be um, old forms of hierarchy. Uh, envy, greed. So go ahead and write what you want on the inside and what you don't want on the outside. And just keep writing. And some of you that are have active goals around um, expanding your relationships with people that are different from you, you could have uh, learning from others and that all the benefits of diversity. Uh, you could even have things that have attention for you on the inside, like conflict that leads to growth could be on the inside. And, and on the outside, it, it could be things like conflict that leads to more conflict. <laughs> it could be on the outside. But, you know, we, sometimes we need the, the, that beneficial creative tension is what we call it in light year. The creative tension that leads to growth. The healthy discomfort of becoming. Good job, you all. strife. Some of the things I heard last night, being stuck, trapped, came up a lot for people. Ch choice in, in, the, in the center of your circle, being able to be at choice, to have your yes and your no, clear communication, being seen, seeing others. The future of work is human. The future of work is the future. The future of work is people beginning to declare and understand that they 
are the co-creators, the, the co-authors. Because unless we say we are, we'll never have the opportunity to be. So sometimes it might feel like, oh, Suzanne, but you don't know my boss. <laughs> so then you could begin with being heard, experiencing my own impact, attracting myself to a place where I can, I will, where I'm seen as a reliable and trusted source. And then keep writing what you don't want on the outside and allow that circle to be the sacred geometry that protects and adds power to what you want so that at any given moment, you can focus on the circle and be that version of yourself. I, I, I had one of my uh, Light Your members talk about how he was now able to place old patterns of his own outside the circle to be able to recognize them and no longer need them as part of his identity. For a while in my 20s, I needed people to dominate me so that I could be upset about them dominating me so that I didn't have to deal with my own life. And then I could preserve the right to complain about them instead of having my own sovereignty and agency. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> okay, you've got just a few more moments. All right. Okay. Now, for fun, go ahead and look at what's inside that circle. And see what are the, uh, you, you'll see that uh, what I did here is I circled four words. So you could circle like three to five words that really stand out to you or phrases that really stand out to you as, as what you really want. You get to have everything. <laughs> you can add to it any time. You don't have to delete. But it'll just help you see immediately on that conscious and subconscious level what rises right to the top. Who am I to want that? Well, here you are. <laughs> I, I want that. So go see what those three to five things are. Okay, now what I'd love to do is uh, hear from, let's hear from oh, at least like five people. What, what are you discovering that you, you are the person to want that? It'll, it'll really help and encourage and inspire other people to hear what you're finding and discovering. So let's lay that track down. Yeah, who'd like to share first? Jenna. Hi, Jenna. Hi. Thank you. Hey. It's interesting because the things that I circled scare the crap out of me. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I'm like really feeling that like who am I to want that? Um, mm. I want, well, this one doesn't scare me that bad, but a hybrid work environment. So working remotely and working in person with companies and events. And then um, helping companies to create an integrated work environment where the whole human is considered. So um, bringing in all these skills that I have acquired over the last decade as a yoga instructor, mindfulness teacher, Reiki master, breath work, you know, and being able to incorporate all of that into the coaching and leadership um, of these small companies, I sense for now. Um, one thing I circled was trust that what I have to offer is needed. Yes. I, a lot of what I, where I get scared, where that feeling comes up is like, who am I to go into companies and organizations when I'm not, I haven't been in the corporate world. Yes. And it's just like what Brandy was saying about Carla, like the more you Jenna say what you want and, and who you are, See, people, we don't know that people need what we have until we begin offering it. Yeah. I mean, it's such an interesting uh, catch-22. And so that's likely 
what gives you that, let's call it creative tension, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and, and trusting and trusting. See, there will be times where we are, let's call it ahead of, of where someone might be able to consciously bring to language I need an integrated life person coach, but you know, like you begin and then it begins to unfold. And so keep your, could you, could you, without having to wordsmith, just go ahead and make a sentence from those three things. I want, bump up, just string it together. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just is. Uh... I trust that my voice is needed to uh, assist companies in creating an integrated work environment where the whole human is considered. Uh, I also have speaking gigs at corporate conferences. So there's some way of like getting yeah. in. Um, yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> uh, see, all that can either have a dot, dot, dot or appeared. And that gives Jenna a place to come back to. And look, that that is the future of work. That's the future of, of your work. And see, listen, the double meaning. It's Jenna's work to bring that to the earth now. Her, just the way it's, it's Carla's, it, you're bringing it. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Good job. All right. Debbie. Debbie, what did you discover? So the first thing I heard was I can lead world leaders to recognize and want the, their country's families to have these principles to prosper and heal. Um, and I can lead mental health leaders to recognize the value of um, of these principles, um, I can lead and guide families to change their legacies to, you know, caring for themselves and loving each other. And yeah, I'm freaked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, you can, and you are. And I I mean, what I love is the evolution of being able to be in your front row and hear you say those things. There, people listening, there was a day where Debbie wouldn't have been able to say that. And now that she's saying it, see, that's how we become it. And you are that. I, you know, it'll be fun to see what happens, Debbie. (laughs) You know? And we don't know. Look, Debbie could help. You know how she said, I, I can help world leaders heal their families. I, I have goosebumps. I'm going to make a prophecy. She could work with an 11-year-old today that becomes that future world leader. We do not know. And if who we are is that they are that possibility, it could be, you see how it all works? You see how it's a golden link? Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> And now we got our Bertha, Bertha, who's going to be leading personal legacy on Lightyear, one of our recent uh, Lightyear coach graduates. It's so exciting to see you here too, Bertha. What did you see? Hi. Um, well, so what I saw was I put um, opportunity to grow um, because I was just looking at like my current job right now. That's what I, what I did my circle round. Yes. And so it was like opportunity to grow just because I'm feeling a bit stuck here right now. And then working digitally and working from home, like slash part-time, like being in the office and at home just to kind of get more of a balance of like change of scenery is what I really want. Change um, of scenery. Yeah. Okay. So now do you already have permission to work that way, Bertha? Um. Not yet, but show when you I move, <laughs> <That's over there. laughs> so when I, when I move, um, I will have that opportunity, uh, to work from home because yes. I will see in the same state. <laughs> so, yes, yes. And you'll be, so it's really about change of scenery, 
-hmm. growth. Tell me the other two things again. Um, so, and digitally, like getting to work digitally, um, because my boss has kind of been on that, like hesitant of being digital. He loves paper and I'm like, okay, it's time. It's time. <laughs> right. So the future of work, whether you, uh, how much you step into this uh, will be your choice. And I've maybe said this to you before, Bertha, but let me say it again, newly. See, that person actually needs the inspiration and energy from you and the pathways mm -hmm. to be able to transition and modernize their business and to lean into your digital expertise. Yeah. And in that way, you lead that person's growth. Yeah. That business will be better set up because you're helping, I believe him, him or her, they yeah. through the, through the, uh, their own stuckness and fear. See, I'm, I'm, I'm going to offer and assert that the stuckness that you're sensing actually isn't your stuckness. It's your stuckness with their stuckness. Yes. So, so yes. what I love about you, people watch, that is the face of gentle power. Bertha is going to help this person set some goals and find some ease in it because they won't be able to do it on their own. Just mm -hmm. the way so much of what all of you enjoy about Lightyear is from my daughter, Hunter. She's like, mom, we can do this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so it's a trusting and a surrendering intergenerationally in the workplace. Not like the oldest person says what happens, that there's this, um, it's probably in your circle, Bertha, that tell us, the quality that you want in that relationship with that, uh, that person you work for. What's the quality you want? We know the growth, but what's the quality of the relationship that it's becoming? I feel like it's just, it, well, another one was like effective communication, like having that would be, be having it did like everything digital will make it for easier communication so it's like clear cloth across the board where I'm not having to continuously repeat myself and that's like the part where I get frustrated is is that we're not, we don't have that quality communication okay okay so the future that you of work that you're creating is this quality clarity mm -hmm. and effectiveness of communication yeah so now and you are a coach. You may need to coach the person through that. So every time you repeat yourself, um, it feels like you were, I, I'm going to give her some coaching now. Um, let me see how to say it. I've made this deal. Oh, I, I know what you need. You need, um, you, you need, uh, you need the global perspective and possibility podcast of um, everything is recoverable because it teaches about how to do what essentially feels like repeating in a fresh way so that you get the growth. Because if you think about it, Bertha, like haven't I had to repeat everything that I've ever been teaching for like 30 years, but how, why it feels fresh and grows for me is that I, I use that principle. So I want to make sure I get that to you, but it's essentially release. What I do is I release the frustration and I say, this is a new moment and there's something new possible in my growth here with this person. Yeah. That, will, will you do that? Okay. And do that with that person in person before you move. Okay. Yeah. If I, I definitely need to. <laughs> you do. Yeah, I have to. You do. You do. You, you have to for you. So I want you to hear like she's making a choice and a decision to contribute in that way because yeah. it's going to set a foundation energetically for you to be successful in your new home. Yeah, that, that's definitely one of the things that uh, that's on my goal list for like work is setting like a clear foundation of like working digitally and working remotely. Um, yes, because 
he's not very effective sometimes when like it's like guessing and I'm like we can't do that when I'm not like you can't just write the office and tell me like oh this is actually what I meant yes and 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 you can set up ways to have him be successful what I want you to watch is to, just because the person is sometimes frustrating or annoying um that's not you can release that and you can keep teaching and coaching and being a stand for effective, clear outcomes and communication and foundation. And that is so valuable and so scalable. Okay. And there'll be a day where you work with another person and it'll feel different. Mm -hmm. And right now, that person is giving you the best training on the planet for you to be fully you. There, that's my birth of face. Look at that smile. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Sarah. Yeah. All right. And all the way from Berlin, we have Dwayne. <laughs> Share with us what you're seeing. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to, uh, to be with you tonight. Um, so, you know, it's interesting. I, when, when you started, I was like, hmm, I feel like I've, 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 I like the job that I'm in right now. I like what I've set up. And then I thought, what, what more could I want? And then I was thinking, well, of course I can want more. I could, <laughs> why not want more, right? And so, um, um, I, Allison, what you were sharing resonated with me as well. I want to help my leadership team shape a vision. We are um, kind of in the weeds right now with where 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 we're like, it's just not so inspiring. I, uh, I heard someone share our, our purpose uh, today and I, I, I wanted to gag. So <laughs> it's just so generic and uh, not inspiring. So I want to help them shape a vision. Um, I want to, I actually want to upgrade my role. I want to fly a little bit higher um, and impact more people. So I wrote impact. Um, and then I put, interestingly enough, I want to be my own boss, even inside the organization. Um, right. So, right. Why not? Right. Okay, so now for fun and uh, 700 extra adventure points, just like Jenna did, you know, without having to be perfect, take a draft at putting that together in a sentence. Those, those three to four things about being your own boss inside the organization, the leadership vision, about, about impact, just, just see. see. See I what want it is. to entrepreneurially lead the creation of a new team vision that will impact the entire organization. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Thank God this is recorded. You can listen to it at mini minute 56. Cause, cause c c did you hear how it, it sh like had your field go? Yeah. Yeah. And see yeah. by, by crafting that opportunity. Now everyone, I want you to really listen. Those of you that are emerging entrepreneurs, you can use that entrepreneurial spirit to be an entrepreneur, which is what Dwayne is doing. It's he's crafting that self-expression and, and tell us the various multi-potentialite things that you're bringing together, like with all of the, the design work that you've studied, what will, what you just said, allow you to activate as some of your gifts? Like, what are you going to be bringing together? Oh man, just the, uh, the collaborative process to create it. Yes. Um, to lead people out uh, behind the why of it. Uh, yes. To, um, uh, to have it uh, sort of front load our reporting and really set the tone for really great um, discussions that really lead from a, like a purpose centered um, uh, space that puts our, our partners at the center and not just like acquiring customers and this sort of thing, but puts like helping people and why we're really there to uh, the, the great work that we do. Um, yeah, and I just think it will just kind of like, just take us up another notch with just how like our vibration just and, and really motivate people to get behind something that's just so much more powerful. And that is the future of work. And, and that's the future of your work, Dwayne. See, I, I want you guys to see that's what you can do. You can put that sentence together and know, because it, it might feel like, how am I going to make that happen? Say the, say the three to five things that are in the center of your circle. And that's how it's going to be that you say it out loud, <laughs> you know? So thank you so much, Dwayne. Oh my gosh. Let's see. Let me find a fun reaction for Dwayne. 
I am going to give him a rainbow because it's about bridging. It's about bridging the, the dream to the reality. That's really the future. So I want to thank everyone so deeply for being here. I want to thank ahead of time, the people that are uh, watching the recording that, that are there to contribute to being the people that know that they can and are impacting the future of work. If you want to learn more about what we do, please join us at lightyear.co. You can become a member. You could take a personal legacy course with Bertha. You could uh, do, oh, don't we do so many things. You, you could do a whole bunch of stuff. And we make it so my goal is really to democratize world-class development and leadership. Uh, I could spend the rest of my life, you know, uh, charging tons of money to already successful, wealthy people. Um, but I really want to work with people and, and help you touch the people that you're there to touch. Because no one is going to replace who Sarah Lemansky touches, who Marielle, Jenna, Steve, Brisa, Liz, each of you is, is touching those people. I'll never know them. You will. And by you bringing more of you, even if there's that creative tension to have talked about, you're going to be so happy. That's actually how you'll find that fulfillment. So let's all unmute and say goodbye. Thank you so much for tuning in to this third session of the future of work. And I hope to see you around um, light year at some point. Okay. Thanks everybody. Thank Bye. you. Thank Hunter. You, thanks Joelle. Thanks Debbie Thank and Mindy. Thank thanks, you. Lindsay.